in your opinion, as a former pro wrestler for however many uh, decades, I suppose, at this point, where are they going right? Where are they going wrong? Much detail as you can. Uh, what impresses you? What doesn't impress you from the production to the wrestlers and all that? Well, I, I mean, they're first off, boss, they're, they're, they're on TNT, which is probably one of the best networks that we have here in America on cable. Um, and they've had a ton of publicity from and support from the network. Um, and that's also where WCW had Monday Nitro. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of retro feeling to to the show from a production standpoint. They, they do a wonderful job. I mean, it looks looks like a great, you know, a great production. Uh, it really reminds me of, again, WCW with the fi uh, fireworks and and all that. But um, what they lack is just complete, in my opinion, just complete lack of storyline. Um, it, it's almost comical today to see how the talent is as far as, you know, as far as it was, you know, 20, 30 years ago. And what I mean by that is, you know, a lot of the young men that are doing this, and I, I don't say women because of, I'm going at the size uh, part of it. They're like, you know, 150 pounds soaking wet. They don't look like athletes, although they do incredible flips and, and spots like that and stuff like that, but they're just not, um, they don't look like wrestlers. For me, wrestling was pro wrestling was always like fantasy storytelling um, from a male perspective. And back in the day, I used to love, you know, the Hulk Hogan's of the world for a reason. The uh, ultimate warriors, they were larger than life comic book, almost stature. And uh, today it's just like they look, they look like my uh, 20 year old son with tights. Uh, you know, not very uh, scary. Doesn't look like uh, if you got into a bar fight with them, uh, it would be much of a problem to handle. I, it's just the aesthetic of visuals for me is the biggest problem. And instead of storytelling, I, I just feel like the, these young men and women are just they're they're putting spots and acrobatics instead of uh, storytelling, which is a big deal for me. I mean, I know what I watch because I've done it for close to thirty years is a work. It's not real. But at the same extent, you want to be you want to suspend your belief and you want to believe that the two hours you're watching that there, you know, this could be a real fight or something along those lines. And it's just it to me uh, uses the I'll use the F word fake, which none of us in wrestling like to use. And it just a lot of it looks really fake. And that's a huge problem for not just me, but I think a lot of people have the same gripe that watch it on a weekly basis. And it's a shame because they have the money. They have the capabilities to really uh, do something special here. And I've reviewed every single show since its inception. Unfortunately, I just think that uh, they're not willing to change and they're quite happy with uh, what they're doing, you know, which is fine. But the ratings uh, prove otherwise. They've been quite dismal. So do you think it's I mean, I've sort of heard this. Is it sort of indie on the big screen? Is it independent wrestling on the big screen? That's the best thing I could possibly say is it is. Uh, and I know a lot of these guys and gals come from the independent scene. Uh, a lot of them, uh, you know, have been wrestling for a long time. A lot of them I've never heard of, but they are, you know, indie darlings, let's say. And it really is. They're, they're just not ready for prime time. One thing Vince McMahon and the WWE have always done, uh, at least for me as a viewer, is put out the best uh, talent, uh, you know, ready for TV. And... Um, I just feel like these guys that are out there today in AEW, very few have the pedigree that it takes to be on national television. I don't think they understand the actual worth, um, you know, how, how precious it is to get TV time. And I just mentioned it today um, to someone I was talking to about AEW. It's like to be on WWE TV was a huge deal and is a huge deal. And uh, also to be on AEW is, is a huge deal because you're on network television worldwide in some cases and you're just not getting that or taking that opportunity, I should say, to uh, to get yourself over with the crowd uh, and with people at home. It's just uh, something isn't connecting. And I don't know what it is, you know, but it's certainly not uh, connecting to the to the fullest that it could, at least. So um, obviously, you know, there's all good and all bad. I know, like the overall presentation isn't quite to your taste, of course. But I mean, are there any are there any MVPs, most valuable players that you think if you were in charge? I'd have these three on top. Um, the, uh, I'll just throw one name out there. I've seen Brian Cage, and just from looks alone, I think he yes. would pull my head off and bowl it down the street with no thoughts. I, I agree. I, I mean, I, I they definitely have um, 
some great guys and some great talent. Brian Cage being one of them, Lance Archer being uh, another one too. And and it's what you said. It's like the way they look. They look like superstars. And uh, we we need to remember that this is pro wrestling. And uh, look, we AEW has they've got their core audience. Their core audience tunes in every week. I would assume and imagine that you know the executives would want to. Okay, we got our seven hundred and fifty thousand weekly viewers. Uh, now let's expand to, you know, fans that may not be hardcore fans, just, uh, you know, casual viewers, casual fans. And they are out there, uh, you know, uh, on a Wednesday night, there's not a ton of uh, stuff out there unless it's sports orientated, which right now there, there are no real other sports other than maybe basketball, but um, they're just not doing so. They have uh, actually slowly declined instead of, uh, you know, or declined instead of inclined on the ratings. They've, uh, they started off with uh, in the 1.1 or 2 million viewers per week. And it's slowly gone down only once in a while, they crack that 900 to, you know, close to a million uh, viewers. So it's, 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 it's a bigger issue. And they're just, uh, I feel that their problem is they don't have direction. I watch this show every week and I still don't know some of the major tag teams because they'll go on hiatus. You see them once weeks, they won't be back. And, uh, if I have to do that much research and, and I watch it every week, it's, it's telling me that they're not doing a good job of presenting it to the fans uh, in a very, in just a basic manner, in a way that, you know, regular people, not just wrestling people could understand it. And I think that's where they miss the boat. Do you think uh, the legends, uh, I've, I've written a sort of list here. We've got Sting, Taz, uh, Chris Jericho, your old trainer, uh, I believe yeah. it was your old trainer. Yeah. Uh, Arn Anderson, Tully, Blanchard, Jim Ross, and then celebrity Snoop Dogg, Mike Tyson, Shaq. Do you reckon that's the way to go? Or um, I'll be very specific here. I know your old boss, Paul Heyman, was very much a fan of one legend per territory. That's it. Uh, where's the sweet spot for you? Um, I, I'm, I mean, that's it depends who they are. It really depends who they are and what they bring to the table. Um, but I, I do agree that uh, it needs to be a new generation of stars. I think Chris Jericho has done amazing things for the company, uh, especially in the beginning. Um, you know, but in the past year or so, they kind of, it's like, I feel like they got what they could out of him. Um, you know, they just haven't been very creative with him. Uh, Sting, I think, uh, is still very much untapped in AEW. He's come out for a couple of interviews only recently. Um, the last episode he took a power bomb which i was very surprised at age 61 from brian cage um so yeah i mean I, I would definitely i would you know keep it on the low end of legends used but still um i think they're still at the point of passing the torch now if you're bringing in legends to pass the torch i don't i don't see a problem with it but to have them on the upper end of the card it, it becomes a problem like the wwe is having where they're bringing in the goldbergs and the edges um, and then the reason they do that is because the talent that they that they are using, uh, maybe not the talent's fault, but the company's fault that they're probably not doing enough for what it takes to get them over. So they have to rely on, on guys from the past. And uh, that's a huge problem that the, that both companies are having right now. And um, and I don't know how you get out of that because it doesn't seem like anybody's really connecting. I don't know if it's just a sign of the times. Um, I'd hate to say that it's the wrestlers themselves because there's so many great, talented uh, people out there. So I don't want to say it's them, but, you know, you have to wonder kind of what, what has to be done here, you know, and I, and I don't have the answers, but, uh, you know, I would imagine that with so much great talent, they have to find a blend and a good mix of uh, both legends and, uh, you know, the new cast of characters. So in uh, PJ Polacco's AEW, let's say you're the boss, does Kenny Omega uh, hold the main championship? Yeah, sure. Uh, I think he's pretty well regarded as the best in the world. And, um, you know, whether he is or isn't, um, he's certainly up there in the top five. I, I don't know who, who would be better. Um, but, you know, and I think that that's, I think the biggest problem that they have is they do have a great heavyweight title, uh, blend like they have john moxley who is very much uh you know has has the you know everything that a world champion should have and the omega as well um and then kind of it drops off quite a bit um who else do they really have you know the lance archer who i love just from a, a from a look i always mention his name you know he was a new japan u.s champion and um had a great career over there but in aew it just seems like at times they don't know what to do with him but just from his 
his stature. I mean, he's like six, five, six, six, 275 pounds. And he looks, it looks like a killer. So I would like to see him in the mix, Brian cage as well. Uh, and another thing I have to say about that is, uh, you know, the, the faction he's in with Taz and that group, um, Taz is such a good, uh, talker that I feel that he's, you know, overshadowing guys like Brian cage. I feel like, um, you know, they should probably do something more that focuses more on those guys instead of him looking like a sidekick. And that's, you know, the problem I have there, but, um, yeah, their heavyweight title picture looks great to me. It's, uh, it goes from, you know, kind of to the Darby Allens down. It's like, we don't know who's who. Uh, Adam Page is being kind of squandered in the mid card. Matt Hardy the same way. Um, so, I, you know, I don't know. It's very hit and miss with, with them. And I, and I think they haven't figured it out yet where the shows should be more like real life. Because it is proven in a way that the fans are more interested in the backstage stuff and, you know, what's going on uh, behind the scenes. And ECW at one point had an idea of almost a reality show based thing uh, right before it went out of business when we were looking for, uh, you know, a home for our program on cable. And uh, Paul Heyman came up with an idea of almost like making it like a real world MTV style show. Um, you know, like before the matches, kind of going from the hotel to the arenas, showing all of that and then actually showing the matches. Um, and I think it's probably time that the, the way we present shows on television starts to drastically change, because I think if we spent more time doing that and uh, not falling, not letting the apple fall too far from the tree as far as reality, uh, with, with a, within a reasonable sense, of course, not getting too personal. Um, I, I think it would suit everyone better, you know, because sometimes we we try to go in and out of, you know, what's real and what's, you know, being worked. Uh, but all, all it ends up doing is confusing fans. So it should all just kind of be, you know, fans already know. So just give them what they know, like completely do an overhaul of what pro wrestling is and show it from every aspect. I mean, do you kill the magic if you show guys talking their matches over? I don't know, but uh, we're mo- we, we seem to be as fans more interested in that, and perhaps that's the that's the new reality, right? I mean, who knows? It'd be a big risk. It'd be a, It'd big be risk. a huge risk. <laughs> I mean, it sort of happened first and tough enough, didn't it? Really, I remember that being the first. A little bit, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, this is yeah. this is not me giving my opinion, or it shouldn't be a podcast in my opinion. It all should be about you. But uh, uh, my opinion, since I've said I won't give it, but I will, is I would I'd take everybody off Twitter. I would have it a complete closed shop once again. I know it's impossible probably to do that now, but the fact yeah. is is that I I mm. I loved not knowing at all or not really having the access to know what was going on, who really liked who, who really didn't like who, and what the plan was three months in advance. I mean, you can't stop the new uh, the, the news sure. that's happening, but uh, that would be, be my opinion is sort of bar everyone from Twitter unless you have to, unless you're almost sort of semi-in character or at least do the... Uh, I believe it's Jerry Jarrett who said, uh, if, you t- if you use A, B, and C that are all true, and then you go to D, and that's the work, then, then people are more likely to at least get invested, if not outright believe D, and then proceed from right. that. And I always felt that ECW did that very well, or Paul Heyman did that very well. Yes. Yeah. I agree. I mean, uh, something has to change, and it, it wouldn't be so far uh, off to think that. Um, I, I just don't know if, if anybody is... is has that vision i I think that's what really is happening here is a a lack of real true ideas and vision and i thought AEW for sure like i have no idea i'm very ignorant to who runs AEW. like i mean i know obviously tony khan but there's many other people backstage um giving ideas and helping uh write the show and produce the show i just don't know who they are but for me i just find it very very uninspired is a good word like this is supposed to be i mean this is the first time we've had another promotion um like this on television on a major network in 20 years that's a big deal um for a while i I mean i certainly bought into this could be the saving grace of professional wrestling just the fact that there's another alternative uh for men and women to find work full-time work you know and uh and from what i've seen it's just like i've been i've been really hard on it because it's been so disappointing and I had such high expectations. Um, but you know, I think the people over there that are employed by uh, AEW are just so, 
they're so inexperienced and they're just so happy to have a job. I don't think they realize how unique and how uh, important their opportunities are. And they're just like, you know, going with the flow. There's not a, you know, like uh, I, Steve Austin always tells the story of how he wasn't getting used. Uh, I did a podcast with his, uh, one of his original uh, podcasts for his old show. And he told me like, you know, when he was the ringmaster, how, you know, WWE was not doing anything with him. And he would literally have to wait till he went on live television because sometimes Raw would be live one week and then taped the next week just to save money. And Steve would always wait to be on live television to flip the, the script a little bit and go uh, go on his own because he knew if he did it on the tape show, Vince would edit it. And we just don't have people that are, you know, willing to take chances that are, are just kind of willing to to go against the grain and do something that they believe in. Uh, you know, everybody's just happy to be there. Let's play along. Let's play nice. And let me get my nice paycheck. And uh, that's unfortunately what's happening. And there's a real lack of inspiration for somebody, for a company that's so new and has a two hour show. Um, and quite frankly, is beating the WWE with an, you know, on their NXT Wednesday night. So I, I still don't understand how, uh, how these guys just don't see how golden this is for them. I, I, I just don't see it. You know, it's, it's quite shocking. Do you smell what The Rock is cooking? Enough is enough! Moving who can be yeah. And I'm writhing in pain with my sharpshoot. Rocky, Rocky! I am not a nugget! Stick him straight up, your candy ass! I kicked your leg out of your leg. The Rock has come! 